Hey guys, Joey here. Um, I'm going to be doing a Bible study for us through James 3, 1 through 12. Um, let me just first say that I really miss you guys. Um, I miss you so bad. This this lockdown kind of stinks. Um, it's just there's there's no other way to say it. it it's just, it's hard. Um, I miss being at youth. I miss being at church. I miss uh, being able to go out um, and have freedoms, but um, there's been blessings in this. So um, I just want to share a couple blessings with you guys um, that I've seen in my life. Um, the first is I've been able to read the Bible way more. Um, and I should have been doing this before the quarantine. This, um, this, this shouldn't be why I'm reading the Bible. I should be always reading the Bible. Um, but because I have more time, I've been able to build it into my schedule a little bit better. And, um, yeah, I've been able to read it more faithfully. And then the second thing is, the second blessing is that I've just been more, more thankful in general. Um, guys, when you, when you have things removed from your life that, um, you took for granted, it really gives you perspective um, and it makes you more thankful for the things you have, like your family, your friends, um, other things like that. Um, so, yeah, those are a couple of the blessings that I've seen um, in the past couple weeks. Um, so, let's uh, dive into James 3. I'm going to read the entirety of it. Um, so, that's 12 verses I'm going to read for you guys real quick. So, um, listen up. James 3, verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if it, anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouth of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, standing the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. All right, that one, uh, that passage hits really heavy. Um, there's a lot of strong language in there um, about taming the tongue, which is um, uh, taming our words, what we say, what comes out of our mouth. So um, what this passage is telling me, guys, is that our words have a lot of power. Um, what we say can um, can build people up. It can break people down. It says it um, with our words, we um, bless our Lord and Father. So we say good things about him. We praise him, but we also curse people. We curse um, those who are made in the likeness of God. So we're cursing, we're actually cursing God. Um, so our words have a lot of power. Um, it says how great a force is set ablaze by such a small fire. That's what it's saying about about our words, guys. Our our tongue is such a small part of us, um, but it controls a great deal um, of our life. And we have to treat our tongue like it's way bigger than what it really is. Um, like it has more power than we do on our everyday, in our everyday lives. So the first thing that I found from this is that I need to take take my words more seriously. I need to take my words seriously like it's a fire from hell. That's what it says about, about my words, about my tongue, is that my tongue can set fire like it's from hell. That's heavy. That's the power of my tongue. Um, that's the kind of damage that I can do if I don't use it in the right ways. Um, it's just... It's, it's bad. It can, it can curse people. Um, it can hurt people. It can tear people down, but it can also do good things. Um, and so I want to flip over to Ephesians to read more about what the Bible says about our words and about the tongue. 
Um, so I'm in Ephesians 4, 29. It says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So similarly, it says, don't let anything bad come up out of your mouth. We already know because it's very powerful, the words that come out of our mouth. Um, but it says, build people up with it. Say what is building up as fits the occasion so that it can give grace to those who hear it. And then if we go down, it says, let there be, um, this is a uh, chapter five, verse four. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. So those are those um, degrading, tearing down, bad words that curse people that are hurtful, that are from hell, um, that are sinful. It says, let there be none of that, not even a little bit of that, just even the small jokes, none of that is okay, um, which are out of place. So those are, are not supposed to be coming out of a Christian's mouth. They're out of place. Um, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. So if you flip back to James, it says, no human has the power to conquer the tongue. Okay, but we're supposed to tame the tongue. So what do we do? Well, first off, it's we have to realize that no human has the power. God has all the power in heaven, all the power on earth. Everything, um, he, he has everything that we need to be able to conquer the tongue. So we have to put our faith in God that he has the power to help us and to fix this problem, this huge problem fire that we can set with our tongue, this um, this unholy thing that we do. Um, God has the power to help us with that and to give us the power for that. Um, so first off, we need to realize that we don't have that power. God has that power. Um, and so we need to be praying. We need to be looking in his word. We need to be seeking him out um, and asking him on our knees, God, please help me. I don't want to spread a fire of hell. I don't want to burn, burn people uh, tear people down and burn things like like a fire in a in a forest god um i want to build people up um so we need to humbly ask god to help us with that and also um in ephesians 5 i think this this part is really important i already said something earlier about being thankful this season um it says i'll just read it again let there be no filthiness nor foolish talk nor crude joking which are out of place but instead instead let there be thanksgiving. So I think, guys, um, a good application point for taming the tongue is something that you do. First off, like I said, give all the glory to God. Um, he has the power to help you with this. But secondly, I think be thankful. I think when you're thankful, um, when good things are flowing out of your mouth, when you're praising God for the things that he's given you, the things he's done for you, it's a lot harder to, be, to tear people down and to let your tongue control you and to curse people, and to um, to set that fire ablaze, and to really cause some damage um, in your life and to the people around you. So I think Thanksgiving is a good a, a good healthy um, help um, to tame the tongue. If you if you want to be able to talk better and to build people up, um, that fits the occasion and give grace. I think you should be more thankful. Um, you should be thankful um, in how you pray. So uh, pray Thanksgiving, um, but you should also be able to spread that positivity. So be more thankful in how you talk to people um, and talk to them about what you're thankful for. Um, I think this kind of this kind of mindset, um, how you talk about um, things that that God's given you, your blessings, are going to help you to be um, to be able to tame your tongue and to um, Go into life with um, a better control over your words. Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. Like like I said, I really miss you guys. Um, this is nothing like being with you guys and sharing the word um, physically when you're standing or sitting right next to me. Um, but this is going to have to do during this time. So um, I thank God that we at least have... Um, Instagram and Facebook and this uh, virtual world that we can communicate and um, stay connected. So love you guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Please be in this reading plan. Um, read this, this Bible. Uh, it's good stuff. Um, I know you guys know that, um, but I cannot wait to see you guys again. It's going to be a big party when we get to uh, reunite after this, uh, this crisis. So love you guys.